Hi, welcome back to solveandgo.com. Um, this is the next video in a series of videos describing elementary matrices and inverse matrices. In the last video, I showed you the definition of an inverse matrix. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can find the inverse to a matrix, if the inverse exists. Remember that um, not every matrix has an inverse. So first, let me go back and talk again briefly about elementary matrices and the fact that you can use elementary matrices to perform row operations. So say we start with our example matrix and we're trying to row reduce it okay, to get, say, a solution. The first thing we might do is multiply the top row by 2 to make this a 6 so that we can later subtract to get rid of this 6 down here. Okay, so the corresponding elementary matrix would be the identity matrix multiplied by 2 in row 1. It would be this matrix here. Okay, and as we saw in the last video, this would give us 6, negative 4, 6, 1. Okay, then again, if we were trying to row reduce, the next step would be to get rid of this 6. So we take row 2 and subtract row 1. So let's get the corresponding elementary matrix. Row 1 stays the same. Row 2 subtract row 1. That would be 0 minus 1 is negative 1 here. And then there's a 1 here. 1 minus 0 is 1. Okay, so what we get here is um, 6 minus 6. This would make this a 0. And 1 minus negative 4 would make this a 5. Okay, so if you perform this matrix multiplication here on the left, um, as an exercise, you should do that for yourself. So multiply these three matrices together. What you get is this one here. Okay, so let's say we call give these matrices names. Um, we'll call them E and number them for elementary. So say E1, okay, E2, and and so on. Okay, and we'll call this matrix A. So what happens here, um, this matrix has a unique solution, so it can be row reduced to the identity matrix. Okay, what that means for us is that in terms of multiplying on the left by elementary matrices, there are elementary matrices E1, E2, we saw these, uh, and so on. Okay, say there's n steps, n row reducing steps. Um, so we can do n row operations to A, and what we're left with is the identity matrix. Okay, in this case, that's possible. As we saw last time, um, the inverse has the property that the inverse of A times A is the identity. Well, what we see here is that if we multiply E1, E2, and En, this matrix has that property. Okay, so this would be En minus 1, the next one down. E2, E1. This has the property of the inverse, and there's only one inverse for a matrix. So that means that this string of elementary matrices multiplied together is the inverse of A. So if we can get that matrix, we can find A inverse. So what have we done here? Well, um, let's take a closer look at, at this matrix here. Um, EN, okay, and so on, multiplied by E2 by E1. Well, of course, this is like multiplying E2 by E1 times the identity matrix. So what we can see over here is that we've taken the identity matrix and multiplied it on the left by a series of elementary matrices. So as we saw in the first video, this is equivalent to taking the identity matrix and performing the row operations corresponding to these elementary matrices. Um, it's, it's equivalent to performing those operations on the identity. So what this means is that if we perform the same row operations that take E, or sorry, A to the identity matrix, we'll take the identity matrix to the inverse of A, okay, which is here. Okay, so once more, if we take A, perform a series of row operations to get the identity, and take those same row operations and apply them to the identity matrix, 
we'll get the inverse. So what's a good systematic way of doing this? Well, let's take our matrix and perform the row operations to row reduce it to the identity matrix. But at the same time, we want to keep track of what those row operations would do to the identity matrix. So what we're going to do is draw a vertical line here and then put the identity matrix on the right hand side. Okay, so now when we perform row operations, we'll simultaneously perform them on the left of this vertical bar and on the right. Okay, so as we saw, what you might do first is multiply the top row by 2. You get 6, negative 2, 2, 0. Second row stays the same. Okay, and then we want to get rid of this 6 down here, so we take row 2 and subtract row 1. We have 6, negative 2, 2, 0. The top row stays the same. We get 0. I'm sorry, this is a negative 4 up here. Make that change if you've been writing this down. That was a negative 4. We multiply the top row by 2. Okay, so 1 minus negative 4 is 5. Um, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And 1 minus 0 is 1. Okay, um, next what we want to do, again, I made the same error here. This is a negative 4. Okay, so make sure you make that change. Okay, the next step is to take row 1 and get, well, we want to add some multiple of row 2 so as to get rid of this negative 4. So we should add 4 over 5 times um, row 2. So row 1 plus 4 over 5 row 2. Okay, what we get is 6. That becomes a 0. Uh, we get 2 plus 4 over 5 times negative 2 in that entry. And we get 4 over 5 in the last entry here. 0 plus 1 times 4 over 5. And the second row stays the same. Okay, so what's... Just add these fractions together here. Okay, this fraction ends up being 2 over 5. This is 4 over 5. And then we have negative 2 and 1. Okay, so I'm going to have to erase where we started. Okay, so we're again row reducing this. There's one more step. Take row 1 and divide it by 6 and row 2 and divide it by 5. And what you end up getting is 1, 0. Um, divide this by 6 makes 1 over 15. And then divide this by 6, we get 2 over 15. Okay, and then we have 0, 1, negative 2 over 5, and 1 over 5. Okay, so we've reduced the left side to the identity. And I'm claiming the right side is A inverse. Let's check that. Well, in fact, we don't need to check it. We did this in the last video. So if you go to the last video, I showed you that A inverse, I did it by performing, by checking the properties, A inverse is 1 over 15, 2 over 15, um, negative 2 over 5, and 1 over 5. Okay, so again, to check this, what we need to do is check that A inverse times A is the identity matrix, and A times A inverse is the identity matrix. And again, um, you can see that calculation in part two of this of this video series.